Hey guys, it's Melissa here from MelissaOatman.com. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness, a daily podcast devoted to spirituality and self-help. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So today I have the pleasure of having an amazing guest with me. I have Miss Aubrey Nichols. She is a self-love advocate and a writer. And uh, I came across your bio and I was just so interested because she's really interested in motivating and helping women and empowering women. And you know, that's really what my show is all about and what I do as well. And so I can totally relate to your story. And you have 15 years of, de- of recovery. So I wanted to invite Aubrey on to my show to have her talk to you. So Aubrey, welcome. Thank you so much, Melissa. It's so wonderful to be here. Um, I, I, I love the title of your podcast, oh, the, you. the inner, Your Awesomeness. Yeah. I love that. I had, I had to get on this show. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And now I know you're from LA and you're a self-love advocate and a writer, but what really interested me uh, was the fact that you're also, so you're a recovering addict and you have 15 years of sobriety. Now that has to be like, you must be such an amazing person to have 15 years in. So why don't you tell us first of all, a little bit about yourself and then kind of what has your journey been like for you? Yeah, well, um, so I, I am in LA. Actually, I lived in New York for the last 20 years. And prior to that, I hailed from Texas. So grew up in the land of like Perfectionville. Everything's bigger and better. Um, and in Houston, Texas. And that's where I, I consider myself a Texan really at heart. Um, and, you know, I like I've always really believed that I'm always really operate from this approach of go big or go home. And when I turned, I don't know, around 16, 17, when all the people are like drinking in in college, I've embraced that sort of go go big or go home um, mentality when I started drinking. But even before then, just growing up in a home with a mom who was a personal trainer and a nutritionist and a dad who flew F-16 um, jets and just extremely disciplined. Like I, for, I am the oldest of three girls and looked down at my thighs at six years old and thought they were too fat. So really for me, the addiction, it, it really started with an eating disorder and this feeling of like not enoughness and wanting to be thinner, 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 and really just disappear. Um, and then sort of jump ship to like drinking and drugs and um, all the other things. It was just really how could I fill my insides with the outsides? I've always felt like there was like an emptiness. It's like deep, dark emptiness or loneliness inside of me, like a hole. And um, I don't know, I, I could, it could never be, um, I just, it was this, this like deep longing and deep pain that I always felt from a very young age. Um, and I thought that there was something fundamentally wrong with me. That's really interesting that you say that because I think a lot of people experience that pain that you're talking about. And it doesn't have to be that you're addicted to drugs and alcohol. Some people are addicted to food. Some people are addicted mm-hmm. to fear based thinking. You know, some yep. people are addicted to um, procrastination. I mean, there's so many different things that you can be addicted to, but really it's all about filling that void. And I love that you mentioned that. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I there was always just a lot of chatter from the very get-go. Like, I'm a very creative person. I have a very active internal world, internal mind, but I also am an empath, so I'm very sensitive to all the sights and smells and feelings and spoken and unspoken things that are going on around me. For instance, in this global pandemic, I mean, the amount of, like, other people's feelings whether felt, overtly felt, or kept inside that I'm taking on um, just requires a lot of self-care and processes, processing and um, moving through those emotions. Because um, so 
that said, if I've got like a wild internal world and a wild external world, then it beca- I, I, needed the, I needed an out. I needed to soothe myself. So, you know, eating or not eating was a really good way to do that. Bulimia was a really good way where it really soothed and just quieted my nervous system. As I got older and I could drink, I did that, a bunch of that too. I did all of the drugs. Um, snorted them all. It didn't matter. I didn't care what they were. Um, and um, yeah, I just got to a point where I had moved to New York around when I was like 26. Um, and I was like living this like nighttime life, you know, and really I'm here in LA. I, I can't get up early enough. I, it's like, I'm a sunny sort of optimist type person but I was in New York I was like living this nighttime life with nighttime friends doing a lot of like nighttime stuff like drinking and and you know staying up late like for days on end and for me what really happened was um I was at this after party I'd been up like Thursday Friday Saturday night you know Sunday morning comes and like I was down in the battery and all the window shades were closed. It's like, people were like, we're gonna keep partying. You know, it's like strung out and it's like awful. And, um, and I like start running around this big loft trying to open up this windows. And like, I'm not scared of the light. I'm not scared of the light. But in fact, I was scared of the light and I was af- afraid of my own light. And that's why I kept on like filling my body with this like toxic drugs and drinking and people and so from there i walked up second avenue it was like 10 streets but it felt like forever and it was like 11 a.m in the morning and i just saw like all of these people doing daytime things and walking and walking in friend groups and going to brunch and that was really what did it for me i didn't have any friends that i could go to brunch with I only had nighttime friends who were going to be like be sleeping through t- till Tuesday, trying to sleep off their hangover. And that was it. Like from that point on, I just had a desire to stop drinking, to stop doing drugs. Um, and I didn't really hit a bottom, but I saw a bottom. And um, that, I mean, that was, I just, that was it for me. And then from that day on, I, I started going to meetings and I I really never totally identified myself as an alcoholic, but more of like someone who has addictive thinking and addictive behaviors that follow. But um, one day at a time, my life got better without drinking. And um, for anybody who's thinking about recovering and has a problem with the labels, I'm like, I have a lot of problems with labels. but what I don't have a problem with is feeling good. And one day at a time, I could go to these meetings and get the support and talk about my problem of the day. And um, I started to feel better. And uh, that was enough for me. I mean, I, I like to feel good. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> I think that the one thing that you said that stands out to me the most is when you said that you were an empath. A lot of the people who listen to my show are empaths. They're on this mm-hmm. spiritual awakening journey. Um, and so I identify with that too, that sometimes the outside energies that you pick up on become so overwhelming. And I think it's really important. I think a lot of people numb that with substances because they don't really want to have to go internally and and recognize like what's happening why do i feel this way why do i have all of this clutter and chatter in my brain and not realizing that it's other people's stuff that they're picking up on and i think a lot of empaths fall down that trap of addiction because it's a way for them to drown out that extra noise so the fact that you said that you are an empath i think that a lot of people and my my listeners will identify with you with that So what do you do? Is there something that you do now that helps you to not feel overwhelmed by everything? You mentioned with this pandemic, and I know a lot of my listeners have reached out and said, oh, it's so overwhelming and I'm so afraid. And we've been talking about not letting fears get the best of you. How do you cope? And how did you cope with this being an empath once you realized you didn't want drugs or alcohol anymore? How do you cope? 
Yeah, well, for me, I mean, the, you know, movement is just a big part of it. So, you know, from the very get go, so it's energy, right? It's, 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 it's energy and it's other people's energy or it's my energy. And if those energies get stuck um, and aren't moving through, then that's when, at least for me, I get in, in trouble. Um, and I feel like I got to air, let the air, air out of the balloon. And um, the way I let the air out of the balloon is not when it's about to bust, but it's actually even before it gets full. So the way I do that is like, I have a mini trampoline. I jump on the mini trampoline, like at least daily. I listen to music, I dance, I write morning pages in the morning. I, I cry a lot, almost every time I'm, I meditate daily, if not twice daily, if not three times right now, especially with what we're going through. Yeah. Um, and I cry a lot. and. Um, and, um, yeah, I think, you know, so those are the things that, that I talk to people. There's an energy about, um, so progesterone is a, is a, um, it's a hormone actually that, you know, a lot of women we have like during a certain point of our cycle and when we get pregnant, but when women are talking with other women, progesterone is actually a calming, um, hormone so when women are talking to other women progesterone is released and it gives you that feeling of like comfort and coziness so i think like talking to other women um or like just talking to people and laughing all of those things are really helpful um and i think like what i mean it's specifically like what we're experiencing right now um I just want to speak a little bit to that with COVID-19 because um, there's no right way to quarantine and there's no right way to do um, the coronavirus. Like the only right way to do it is the way that is right for you. So this means taking whatever comforts you need. It's like eat the donut, walk, binge the TV show. I mean, listen, <sighs> watch the news if that's what makes you feel in if that's what makes you feel comfortable and safe for me i don't want it all um and i like to pretend i like to listen wake up listen to beyonce and jay-z jump on my mini trampoline and pretend like everything's just fine out there um but i do think that people especially in these sort of this global trauma that we're going underneath, it brings up all of these other traumas that people have experienced in their life and people who have any sort of PSD, PTSD, it is bringing up a lot. So the most important thing is, is that you move it through your body, you talk about it, you don't judge it, and you just do what makes you feel safe. And you have the right, we have the right to set boundaries when other people's, what, how they're taking care of themselves in the pandemic infringes upon what we need. We, you know what, like I live with um, a couple who's married. And so I have to tell them, you know what, you guys, I'm not gonna come down or I'm gonna put some headphones on if you guys are listening to the news. Cause it just like sort of rocks me from the inside. And, but, but also they need to watch the news. So it's just like really coming a place from like, if we were all little children, like right now, which is we are, we're like waiting for the government and to like, tell us like what to do. And the government didn't even protect us. And like, you know, and there's just a lot going on. So just gentle, loving kindness right now zero expectations and just like i did when i got sober melissa it's one day at a time yeah i love that and i love that you said that when you meditate and whatever you just allow yourself to feel your emotions cry. um because i was uh i did an episode yesterday about not being a stuffer not being a person who stuffs their emotions down because we have to heal it you have to feel that stuff in order to heal it and that I think when you meditate and you actually allow yourself to get emotional and to feel all of that stuff, that's when you're really, really going to start to feel better because we get it out. So I love that mm. you do that and that you tell them that it's okay for them to process it however they need to, because you're right. Not everyone, you know, I was just talking to a grief counselor yesterday and she said, you know, not everybody's grief experience is the same. 
And so you can't compare yourself or have any kind of expectation because everyone deals differently. So I love that you mentioned that too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard that you have a book coming out. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So, um, so, it, you know, like I was saying earlier, my experience was like living a lifetime of filling my out insides with the outsides and really the last a chapter, if you will, of that was walking down. I was 35. He was 41 walking down the aisle to this like wonderful, generous man thinking that I could hand over my emptiness to him. I would be a wife. I would finally be enough. Um, he could love me for me, but three years into the marriage, living in New York, I had the houses and the cars and dripping in pink diamonds, and I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror. It was the most miserable version of myself I had ever been, and um, I had all those things that I thought would make me happy. Um, so the book is titled Enough, How I Stopped Searching, Starving, and Striving, and Became the Woman of My Dreams, and um, it was so the six, yeah, it was probably four or five years ago that I embarked on this self-love journey. Um, and I left the husband that was sort of suffocating my spirit. And um, I've just been on this road and this just self-love journey ever since. Um, so that is what the book is about. It sort of goes back to like the growing up and learning to play small and, you know, a lot of the fun, like, nightclub, you know, all the unavailable men, all of the sort of filling your insides with the outside sort of debauchery that went on, but really takes it to a really beautiful um, place and where I am today. I mean, the big aha there is like the foundation, the relationship that we have with ourselves, that's the foundation for everything in our life. I the music that. we listen yeah. to, the food yes. we put in our body, the friends we have, the jobs we have, how many hours we spend on Instagram and, you know, and like it, how much sleep we're getting. So, I mean, it's only natural that as I cultivated a more relation, a more loving relationship with myself, then all of the baddies, the bad things just made their way out. They just said, it's just, it's not like they were bad, but they were just not for me and who and how I wanted to treat myself. I love that. Self-love is so important. It is totally the foundation of everything. And you're absolutely correct in saying that. You know, you're talking about you had all of the material things that you would think that someone would want and a husband and all of that. And I think that's what people don't understand is people will say, when I have money, I will be happy. Or when I have this, I will be happy. Instead of saying, I'm happy and then these things come to me which is the basis mm. for the law of attraction, right? So um, how do you help people when it comes to self-love? Like what, what are your thoughts on that? Or what would you, what advice could you give people? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, the, the three things that helped me get on the journey of self-love were this. Number one, I started doing this crazy um, exercise at Equinox in New York City, which was like, wild, hard, intense cardio, which is so my jam, but paired with this affirmations. So it's like, I started to really embody these new way of thinking. And these affirmations were positive, like you're a creative genius, you are enough, you're strong enough. And so as I started to crowd out um, the, the sort of negative thinking, pattern thinking that I'd been addicted to and thought that was truth, then I was able to rewire my brain with these um, more positive thoughts. So that was one thing. Number two is um, I started meditating daily. I mean, and now I told you, like, it's like three times a day if I can. Just meeting myself in the quiet, getting really intimate with my own thoughts from a place of um, getting curious about them with, with non-judgment. Just, you know, because we are not our thoughts. They are just thoughts. And if you can... For me, if I was able to just watch my thoughts and observe them, I could separate myself from those thoughts and know that I wasn't them because our thoughts create our emotions and that creates the life that we're living. Um, 
So I would say first step is just really able to meet yourself in the silence, get intimate with who you are. And, and then from there, I mean, there's just accepting who you are before you even get into the self-like and self-love. Cause that's like, self-love is not for beginners. I mean, it's hard stuff. I'll be doing it for the rest of my life. Um, and then thirdly, I would just say, I surrounded myself <clears throat> with a bunch of like one, like-minded women who were on the same journey as me. So constantly hearing out from the outside, Aubrey, we need you to be, to shine as bright as possible in the world. Be as jumpy and as energetic. You're not too much. You are so exactly how you're supposed to be. And so surrounding myself by that community of women where I was able to um, have the work that I was doing be constantly affirmed. They were actually the girls that I worked out with. Um, that was really powerful to me. Yeah, I love that. And I think that you're so right and that you have to surround yourself with like-minded people. It's why it's so important to find communities, especially on social media. I am a big proponent and I tell my listeners this all the time of going through and disconnecting from some of those social media groups that are very negative or the people, you know, just unfollowing a lot and making sure that you follow groups where you will get support and where like-minded people can share their ideas. Um, and in keeping with that, you know, I created my self-love course, You Are Lovable, which is coming up April 20th. Um, and there will be a Facebook group and we're also meeting a few times together in the group for that reason, so people can see, I think it's so great for people to see, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one, which is why I think it's amazing that you wrote your book and you have this story, and I love that title, by the way, that you mix <laughs> your book enough to show people, because in doing this podcast, what I realize is there are so many people who share my story, who have similar stories, and I would never have known that if I hadn't put myself out there. And I think in the same way, you are going to reach so many people and you would never know that someone else reading your book would say, oh my gosh, we had very similar stories and I thought I was alone. And it makes mm -hmm. me feel better because it's this sense of, if she can do it, so can I. And I'm not the only mm -hmm. one out here going through this. So I'm sure that you had to realize that as you were writing this, you know, that you were hoping to reach women who had similar stories. Yeah, I mean, I think that like for those of us who I'm like, you know, I consider myself a light bringer, you're a light bringer. There's people of us who are just vibing high and that's what we want to do. And, um, and, and there's people that aren't or there's people who have never been exposed to this way of being or thinking or feeling. So it's up for us to like, it's up to us to like really like lead the way and say the things that others may be thinking or feeling, but they don't, um, they don't feel like they have permission to say those things. And um, I just kind of like to put it out there. Um, I always kind of like very, keep it real almost to, almost to a fault but i think that that sort of vulnerability is my superpower and so i'm willing to offend people i'm definitely and i'm willing to have people not follow me or not like me or to use an f bomb and um because i think that really it's i think that I can't water down the way I am, my experience and what I went through. And I know that I was given those gifts from a higher power, from the universe, so that I could bear these gifts and share what I've learned with, um, through women, because I have experienced struggle. I mean, it's like, I'll, I, I'm used to struggle. I'm great in struggle. This pandemic, I'm fine with this. Yeah. It's, it's getting used to being happy and the joy and the getting used to the lightness and the playfulness and pleasure. It's like, that's where I am in my self-love journey, right? Like, let me eat something just because. Not because I'm gonna, I just worked out or not because like, you know, not because it's 12 noon. Let me just eat something just because on a really beautiful plate. And you know, I mean, just getting, 
And so that's where I am now. And um, I, I think that, you know, everyone's at a different part of their journey and it doesn't matter where you are. Um, there's, I think that what you said, Melissa, was really important is it's really important for all of us to keep speaking up about our various um, struggles or challenges on the self-love journey so that other people can hear that they're not alone. Yeah, I love that. And I love how you actually have that freedom of not caring. I talk to my listeners about that too, that, you know, that's part of the self-love journey too, is being so confident in yourself that you don't care what other people think of you because it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's none of their business or none of your business, what other people think of you. And I think that's where a lot of us struggle and where some people still have that struggle is even with the food. I love the freedom of that. I like you growing up in my teens started to kind of develop an eating disorder. Um, I wouldn't call it a full blown eating disorder because as I got older, I sort of realized, Oh, well, you know, that's, people made comments to me that were kind of cruel, you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. And I took that to heart. And then every time I would eat something, I would think I shouldn't be eating this or I need to go work out or I need to do this. And then I realized like how stupid that was. Like, it doesn't matter. Like if I'm happy with myself, that's what matters. And mm -hmm. it took a long time though, to get to that place where I could eat something and not feel bad about it, not feel guilty mm -hmm. or feel like I need to work out later. So I love that you said that because that just shows how far along you are on that self-love journey. And I know there are so many people out there who wish that they could feel that way. And I love yeah, that. Yeah, and you know what I would, it's so great. Like the one, I guess the one other thing that I would say about any of these behaviors or thought patterns that, um, I don't know that any of the listeners think that they're not are definitely not serving them. They're bringing them down. What I like to do is I like, there's this like theory, I'm, I don't know, I just made it, it's like I called crowding out. So like, say for instance, like if I am like trying to get on a better eating routine and it's like, I'm upset, like I end up eating Ben and Jerry's like every night and it's like, it doesn't feel good. Or it actually feels good. Right. So it's like versus focusing on not eating the Ben and Jerry's, why don't I just like throw some more kale in the front part, part of the day or, you know, a green juice or something. So I like any, so I just really don't like trying to like move, just to focus on the bad behavior because we're attend, you know, where focus goes, energy flows, like Tony Robbins says. So yes. I really like to focus on how can I bring in more goodness and then the that the things that aren't working and are sort of like bringing you down will naturally just fall away i promise I it's that. tried and true yeah yes yes i love that and and really focusing on the law of attraction the biggest thing there is focusing only on the good thoughts so i love that right. and you just make yourself miserable with the bad ones anyway <laughs> i know i know so how can people get a hold of you or follow you or work with you what how would they do that if they were interested in that? So um, Instagram is my platform. It's it's like I keep it raw, real, funny, somewhat. Sometimes it's R-rated. Um, it's always it's always fun. Um, so it's Aubrey A U B R E E dot Nichols N I C H O L S. And from there you can email me, um, DM me if you want. I mean, especially in this time of COVID, if you just want some support. Um, want me to post on more of this or more of that. And you can um, definitely connect to my website. Okay. But, um, I will definitely have your contact information in the description to this podcast. So if any of you are interested in following Aubrey on Instagram, her handle will be in the description to this podcast. So you can go and click on it. It'll take you right there. And then any information that she gives me, I'm going to pass along to you as well, because I think she just has, so much light to spread and you guys can't see her at home but i can see her while we're doing this podcast interview and her light is just evident she shines so bright and is so beautiful so i think that you guys should definitely check her out and her book enough is it out in stores yet or no 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 we're just like get, trying to get this a publisher 
Um, okay. But it's, it's going to be a way, it's going to be a, a year, but I publish a lot of articles, which are also, you can read on my Instagram as well. Well, if you follow her on Instagram, you will see when her book comes out and yes. we would love to have you back when it does so that you can talk to us about your book. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me today and uh, you're welcome to come back anytime. So is there any last thing that you would like to um, tell our audience or anything about yourself? Yeah, I think right now, just be super gentle with yourself, take it one day at a time, and know that we are really all in this together. And even at the expense of Zoom fatigue, stay connected, stay connected, don't judge your feelings, you're exactly, exactly in the right place. You're, we're born to feel all of this, and this is all, we will get through this. I love that. Well, thank you, Aubrey, so much for being with me. Um, as always, guys, I want to thank you for being with me as well. If you guys like this podcast, please subscribe. Please share it with others. Please leave a review from wherever you're listening. That helps others to find us, not just me, but also Aubrey. And we are here to help spread our light. And so that helps us in our mission here. So I want to thank you so much for that. If you want to work with me, just go to my website, melissaoatman.com. There you'll see all of the services that I offer. You can also sign up for my course, You Are Lovable, which is a two-week course in self-love, self-discovery, and self-confidence. And it is open for enrollment now. If you subscribe to my website, you'll also receive a free morning and evening meditation just as my gift to you. So thank you for being here with me. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I go live on Facebook Mondays at 6.30 Central where I do a free card reading. And I also post Instagram videos and YouTube videos. I have free meditations. So follow me there. All of my information is in the description to the podcast as well. Thank you guys. I am sending you so much love and light. I hope that you have a beautiful weekend and I will talk to you again on Monday. Bye guys.